begin our worship with a thanksgiving for baptism. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is risen indeed. Today we gather refreshed by the resurrection life we share in Christ. We thank you, risen Christ, for the waters through which you have made us new. Renew us continually in the gift of baptism through which you have called us, anointed us as your disciples, marked with your cross, blessed and sealed by the Holy Spirit to do good works. Make us one, risen Christ. Cleanse our hearts. Shower us with life. Let us praise and honor you in the glory of God and through your Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our gathering songs are Lord, I lift your name on high and in Christ alone. And good morning. What a beautiful day to come worship, to worship our ascended Lord on this uh, blessed day. And we invite you to if you feel led to clap. We would love to have you, um, you know, uh, if you feel led.
This morning's first reading is from the book of Acts. In the first book of Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day he was taken up to heaven. After giving instructions from the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs. Appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, 
was going and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. The word of the Lord. Our second reading is from St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians. Paul writes, I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him. So that with the eyes of your heart and mind, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you. What are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints? And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe, according to the workings of his great power? God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him in his right hand in the heavenly places. Far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body. The fullness of him who fills all in all. This is the word of the Lord. Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 24th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Jesus said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. And you are witnesses of these things. And see, I am coming upon you what my Father, I am sending upon you what my Father promised, so that here in the city, until you have been clothed with power from on high, then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. And while he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him, and returned to Jerusalem with great joy, and they were continually in the temple, blessing God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our risen and ascended Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And we'll just observe a moment of silence as the Paschal candle is extinguished. Blessed be God and blessed be his holy name. Well, Jim and I, uh, a few years ago, 2018, in fact, were visiting the Holy Land. We visited an octagonally shaped chapel. It wasn't very large. And this chapel was devoted to remembering and honoring the event that we remark upon today, this ascension of Jesus. The event is monumental to our faith, as Jesus does exactly what he said he was going to do, exactly what the scriptures had said would happen. He dies and he rises, and finally he ascends into heaven on his 40th day 
after Easter, after walking with his disciples for some time, after continuing to teach them and to open the under their understanding of the scriptures, of the word that they will then go on to proclaim. And yet this, chap this chapel, marking this important event of the ascension of Jesus, is tiny. It is located at the highest point on the Mount of Olives, and portions of that chapel date back to the 12th century after Christ. And it includes in it a rock bearing a footprint, a right footprint to be exact, to be precise, and it is said to be the last place where the foot of Jesus touched the earth before he ascended into heaven. Tradition has it that the left footprint was supposedly taken off to the Al-Aqsa Mosque during the Middle Ages. So important is the event of the ascension of Jesus that this chapel is actually widely regarded to be the second holiest place in all of Christendom. And yet, Ascension Day itself is so often missed in many of our traditions. Now, there are some that hold holy days and remark upon this day on one of those. But in our tradition and many others, this day is passed over and ignored in our lives of faith. So the truth is that unless you went to an Amish farm or business run by the Amish on Thursday and you saw a sign posted on the doors of the closed business reading, closed for Ascension Day, most of us never would even be aware of the passage of this day that actually marks the last earthly view that the disciples or anyone had of our Lord as he blessed them and then was carried away on a cloud. And yet in both our first reading and in our gospel, this, re this event is recorded by Luke. So important was it, it's mentioned twice by the same gospel writer and the writer of, of Acts. This event is to drive home to the disciples once again exactly who Jesus was and how he is the fulfillment of scripture. Now the bewildered, perplexed, and perhaps utterly amazed disciples on that day stood rooted to the spot, staring up into heaven. For Jesus had just given them a command and a commission. It was now up to them to proclaim the good news the forgiveness of sin in his name to all nations. And all for Jesus means all, with the exception of none. All will hear about the forgiveness of sin that comes through him. And though that good news, that proclamation will begin right there in Jerusalem. Now as formidable as that charge sounds, the gospel reports that following the ascension, this amazing event, his disciples returned to Jerusalem rejoicing, happy. You can almost picture them skipping back to Jerusalem. So filled with joy were they. While Jesus tells them that they are to carry on and to carry and share the good news of the gospel in all the world, he also tells them that at this moment, they actually need to sit tight. That proclamation, that, that joyful sharing and sending is not going to happen quite yet because Jesus is not leaving them alone to do this on their own. He is sending them some help. And ten days later, as we celebrate, this, on a day that we celebrate this Pentecost, indeed that help arrived as the Holy Spirit appeared and baptized them with fire and gave them all that they needed to pursue their call to serve. Baptized with fire, just as Jesus had predicted, just as Jesus told them at his baptism would happen. Now we, of course, today are baptized with water. But we understand that receiving of the Holy Spirit to arrive to us first on that day, and then again at other times when we are sent out, when we are sent from this place. Now the disciples who followed Jesus, who walked with him, who were with him that day, they would be sent out to teach, to heal, to preach, and to give witness that Jesus Christ is truly the Messiah, and that out of love for all people, and once again, 
all means all, Jesus gave his life on the cross. That means for you and for me and the guy on the corner and the pe people across the world, Jesus gave his life for us all. For the forgiveness of sin. For new life that begins with that forgiveness for all of us. Now being sent for those disciples meant serving a fledgling church, a church that was just beginning, that struggled at many times, in fact. And they themselves struggled. There was sometimes infighting between them. But the fact of the matter was that they would also be persecuted. They would be met with resistance. Their missionary work would spread and would later come to be called Christianity for the sake of the kingdom of God. But they would travel far and wide in their families, and some of them would literally give their lives for the cause. Now today, multitudes of Christians and Muslims and Jews go to the Holy Land. Groups of Christians like Jim and I and the group that we were with travel to Jerusalem and the Holy Land and visit places like this tiny chapel of the Ascension of our Lord. Other places also that are connected to scriptures. We had a plan to do the same with the group from Zion just this past February. We were planning to do that, but of course, because of the pandemic, our plans changed, but we're still hoping to make that trip, probably in 2023 if things are far safer. But the thing is, that faithfulness, my dear sisters and brothers in Christ, faithfulness doesn't require such a pilgrimage or focus on that faraway land. While it is moving and fascinating and wonderful for us to go to places and to be in the spaces where Jesus indeed walked and to see these holy sites, the reality is that our deepest experience, our surest experience is to live out the gospel in whatever communities in which we find ourselves. Jesus, of course, taught that holiness doesn't lie in stones or in structures that we build, not churches, not temples, not chapels. Rather, these structures can be torn down. They can crumble. They age. They fall apart. Holiness is not found in those or any buildings or places or even in the footsteps where Jesus perhaps himself physically touched the earth. Holiness lies instead in this gospel message, the message of God's love that is shared in community as we gather in places like we are today, or shared in the offering of forgiveness to others, or shared as we feed the hungry, visit the sick and imprisoned, speak up for the persecuted and the oppressed, and care for the poor, bringing God's word, God's love, and forgiveness to all of those places that Jesus told us to go, that Jesus himself went. Holiness is found in befriending the lonely or the outcast, like those who are bullied or ostracized or isolated. When sharing acceptance and God's warmth with those who are rejected because of the color of their skin or their ethnicity. When praying for or sheltering the ones denied freedom or safety or the ones terrorized by war, hatred, violence, racism, ignorance. Holiness is found in the suffering servanthood that risks rejection and reprisal when the status quo is challenged. As we celebrate Jesus ascending into heaven today, we join the witnesses across the millennia who have not seen Jesus in person, but have found him to be very present in their lives and in the world through the scriptures and in the bodies and actions of his followers. And in his very own action in the world. St. Teresa of Avila, one of my favorite writers of the Middle Ages, a 16th century Carmelite nun and mystic wrote, Christ has no body now but yours, no hands, no feet on earth but yours. This is testament to the fact that Jesus has loved us, forgiven us, and called us all to be his hands and feet. From the 
youngest of us to the oldest of us. And the really interesting thing was that this morning in the early service, right here in the sanctuary, we had the youngest of us sitting over here in the arms of his parents and grandparents, and we had the very oldest of us sitting right there in the back, the one who just turned 99 years old, Harold Levita. It's amazing. God has called us all, the youngest, the oldest, and everywhere in between. We here at Zion are called and commissioned to become as vital to the mission of God as any chapel or any holy site in Jerusalem, and more so. For they are stationary, they're stable. You have to go to them. Jesus sends us out. We go out to those who are needy to hear of his love and his mercy and his forgiveness. What if we took a close look at ourselves and could see ourselves as Jesus sees us, beloved sisters and brothers called and sent to bring comfort and healing and forgiveness to those who are hurting. We confess that that mission is not always easy. In fact, the original Greek words in this passage include those that form the basis for our English words such as martyr, we all know who martyrs are, and dynamite. And we all know what dynamite is for, what dynamite does. Because, my friends, God's love is explosive. God's forgiveness and mercy blast apart so many of our suppositions and even the ways that we see ourselves and certainly, oftentimes, the way we see each other. God's inclusivity blasts apart the human tendencies to hoard power and wealth and status and to enslave the poor in their poverty and the weak in their helplessness. And this good news is not always welcome. It is often, in fact, rejected. We see that in our world. It's rejected, sometimes violently so. Jesus' awesome message, my friends, is dynamite to worldly greed, corruption, and sin that are tenacious and will strongly resist God's good word. And yet here we are. The message of Jesus Christ is for people of every time and every place. And while we celebrate this day as the time when our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ ascended into heaven where he sits at the right hand of God, as we recite in our creeds, Ascension Day and these texts are even more about being sent out as disciples of Christ into all of the ends of the earth, into every place where we travel as disciples, as messengers and conveyors of that love and mercy and forgiveness. Everywhere we go, everywhere we live, wherever, whatever we call home, work, school, playground, the beach, the mountains, the store, the gym, or the soccer field, everywhere we go. Next week, we will celebrate Pentecost Sunday and the empowerment given to the church by the Holy Spirit, given to all of her disciples. And on that day, we will confer the rite of confirmation to two of our young people, Brett and Sophia, who are both sitting right over there, awaiting, anxiously awaiting the exam that they will both endure after worship today. So you can give them a pat on the back, say a few prayers, and wish them luck. They will remember on that day, and they will affirm their baptism, but you too will remember your baptism. And we'll have a, a special little something for you to help you remember that day and affirm that day once again, that day in which the Holy Spirit, who enlivens our church and sends us out, blessed you with power, with the power of dynamite to share the gospel truth of forgiveness, love, and peace known through Jesus Christ. We are Christ's body. We are empowered, inspired, strengthened, and sent by the Holy Spirit, the power of Christ among us. We are blessed by God to carry this gift into every place we travel, to share God's message of God's grace, and to give it away to all with whom we interact, to bless others, to bless our world through the healing love of Jesus.
Jesus Christ and the restorer of the compassion and vibrant embrace of the Holy Spirit. Whether this takes place in acts of worship and praise, like we gather today, but different because we'll be inviting others in. Invite others in. Invite others to share in this good news, in this experience of worship and praise. Or whether it's through the meals that we distribute to the hungry, or the assistant we assistance we extend to those needing shelter, or other acts of authentic caring and prayer and encouragement that we share with our neighbors. On that day, the two men dressed in white robes urged those who stood speechless, gazing up into heaven to get moving, to get to work, to believe and know that Christ would be with them through a different kind of power, a different kind of power that they had never experienced before, but would always be with them, would never fail them. And the message, my friends, is the same for us. The living Jesus comes to us in the same way. It is present wherever the church pours itself out for others. This is our call to follow the Lord of all. And may we each be empowered through open minds and enlightened hearts to follow our Lord Jesus with hands and feet and hearts and minds, all devoted to embodying his love for the world. Amen. delighted today to recognize Lyons High School graduates. It is our privilege to affirm their accomplishments as they have completed one phase of their lives and moved with great expectation onto another and to bless them on their way. Will the following member of Zion please stand and together with your parents come forward? Braden Stevens. There are others who could not be with us today. We will be remembering them in our prayers as well and sending this blessing along with our tears.
Through you, we have come to understand God's love. Joy and forgiveness. May you always be reminded of our love and the warmth of this faith community. The warmth of this faith community. Sorry, I gave you a jump there. <laughs> Remember, you are never alone. In God's family, you are forever cherished. We bless you in Jesus. Through holy wisdom flowing through you and you alone. 
Give thanks for the gifts you've given them and for the opportunities. We give you thanks for the work they have done and for the work they will do, work in your service. Lord, in your mercy. Dear Jesus, as bombs fall and fires burn, as lives are taken away in the lands where you walked, bring peace to your people. We pray for healing for all victims of violence, for peace, for comfort, for security. Lord, bring your peace to our homes, our streets, our nation, to the ends of the earth. Lord, in your mercy, Tender Shepherd, after these many days in the wilderness of COVID-19, we thank you for beginning to lead us home. Shower your blessing on those who care for others as much as for themselves, maybe more. in your eternal love and abundant mercy, we raise these prayers. Through Jesus the Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And especially with you.
generous hearts, ready to praise you with our offerings and responding to those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who, enthroned forever at your right hand, intercedes for us as our great high priest. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymns. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy, living and loving God, we praise you for creating the heavens and the earth. We praise you for all the ways in which you have created, called, formed, and blessed us throughout all of history. And finally, and most fervently, when the time was right, we thank you for sending your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who in the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life-giving death and glorious resurrection, we await your promised life for all this dying world. Through him, all honor and glory are your almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom, and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The risen Christ invites us to his table. Come, eat, and be satisfied. It is now time for you to take those little packets that you uh, collected on the way in and peel off the film that reveals for you your, your wafer or your little cracker. And as you consume it, remember that this is the body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ. And now if you'll go ahead and peel off the part that uh, covers up the grape juice, drink, and remember that this is the blood of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ shed for you.
And now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace forever. Amen. <clears throat> Let us pray. Life-giving God, in the mystery of Christ's resurrection, you send light to conquer darkness and water to give new life, and the bread of life to nourish your people. Send us forth as witnesses to your Son's resurrection, that we may show your glory to all the world, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. And now, people of God, receive this blessing. May our glorious God grant you a spirit to know and to welcome, to, to know and to love the risen Lord Jesus. And the Lord God of life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Just a couple of announcements before we move on with our sending him and then the dismissal. And uh, the first is that beginning today, we will uh, be publishing or posting uh, a children's sermon on YouTube each Sunday. And although we don't have many children in with us now, we know that our adults are our children of God and enjoy watching these as well. So just a note to you that you can begin doing so on this Sunday. Divine and Dining is an event that has been advertised for our newsletter and for our bulletin. And uh, Patty Coral has sent out a survey asking folks when the best time for them to do such a thing would be. And so she's looking for your responses. And so far, May 30th is in the lead for the day that event will take place. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, please make sure that you take your bulletin home and read it or, or look at your last um, newsletter or call Patty Coral and certainly uh, let her know uh, of your availability and um, also your support. Next week, as I mentioned earlier, is Pentecost Sunday, and it is a Sunday when the church decks itself out in red to signify the fire and the spirit of the, of the coming of the Holy Spirit upon the disciples and upon the church. And so wear your red. In addition, um, to, uh, we've been ordering geraniums, and a number of you have, probably most of you have, but if you have not yet ordered geraniums for that day, to be placed in memorial or in honor of someone or something, then um, please go ahead and do so today. There's, I don't think that there's a form in your bulletin today, but there are some on the um, communications table, and you can call the office as well to get that done. But we'll be picking those up later in the week, so please be sure to do that as soon as possible. And finally, we've been announcing that on Memorial Day Sunday, which is May 30th, two weeks from now, we will have a commemoration for those who have given their lives in service to freedom and of our country. And so if you have folks who are um, who have given their lives in such a way, please do let us know so we can include their names in the commemoration and in the bulletin. And finally, just uh, as I alluded to earlier, or announced earlier, of course, we know that there has been a little bit of a change, well, a big change, actually. And some folks are a little bit alarmed by the big change that the CDC has announced this week. The COVID task force, as I said earlier, will be taking up this matter to kind of plan maybe a more measured stepwise progression to really relaxing a lot of the, uh, a lot of the uh, things that we've been going through, wearing masks, separations, and things like that. But we also know that there are some in our community who have not been vaccinated, who cannot be vaccinated, or uh, have chosen not to be vaccinated. And of course, children are among those, and sometimes we have children in our worship. And there are some who, whether they've been vaccinated or not, are still very cautious and concerned about that 5% chance that we still have of getting COVID, even if we've been vaccinated. And so out of love for one another, and out of love for our brothers and sisters, at least for now, the intention is that we'll continue to wear our masks, especially if we're singing, reciting, taking part in, in worship in that way. Um, but when we're in the building, until we kind of let you know, let your guard down, uh, please continue to wear your masks. We know that out there, we're hearing a, a very different thing, and practices are very different, but we will continue to look at numbers in Lancaster City or in Lancaster County and see what changes are brought by this new CDC guideline and the changes in stores and things like that. So I would love, and I actually need to hear your feedback on this, especially those of you who are in the medical field, but really all of you. Let me know how this how it touches you, how it hits you, what your thoughts are, what your comfort level is. Um, it wasn't very long ago that many of you responded to a survey that we sent out.
and I so appreciated that it really helped us to get to the point where we are now, but of course, change has brought new questions to our, our minds, and so uh, we really do need your feedback and welcome it. So please do um, spread that news and spread that word and let us know how you're doing, uh, but at least at this point, that's how we will be addressing the changes um, in uh, what we've heard just this past week. I now invite you, are there any other announcements for the good of the congregation before we move on? Seeing none, we will sing our final hymn, and remember that clapping is welcome. Um, I think this is actually a slower song, but of course your participation is always welcome and invited. 